Learn the one question that always silences a conversation, how security was one man's greatest weakness, and hear how I am rightfully accused of theft by a famous classical composer. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with unrelenting joy. I'm John Novotai, Swoboda author and musician. Today's show, it's never too late. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine from childhood. We've, we've kept in touch all along our lives, you know, at least on a weekly basis. We're running buddies, so we, we, we talk a lot about life, career, and the future. And he was really frustrated that he's getting ready to retire, like in the next year or so. He, he just turned 60, and he's planning a retirement. But the biggest weight on his chest was that he never took the time for the things that mean the most to him, his passions. Even if ever so slight, he never really took time to till them. And he told me, he said, for the last 30 years, he's watched everybody else have the courage to pursue what they want in life. You know that feeling, even if other people aren't doing it, you know that feeling where you feel like you missed the boat, that life is going by. And while you're setting all of these goals and you're you're reaching a financial security goal, which he did, that you forget that time is going by and that there's only so much time left to pursue what means most to you. And with him, his decisions led to opportunity for more financial security. That was his number one thing, which was to be secure so that when he retires, he can do what he wants with his life. Well, now the momentum of his skills and his talents and creativity, the momentum of it has lost its strength. And he feels like he just doesn't have enough time left to rebuild that, even with retirement, that he feels like he, he missed out on being involved in that passion and building those skills so that when he wakes up in the morning, he feels good about his ability and his vision and his ideas playing out in his life. Aside from work, his conscience is just shouting at him that he shouldn't have spent so much time climbing those corporate ladders. And while security is important to all of us, to all of us, if it's the only focus you lose a sense of yourself. And we're going to talk about what to do about that, how to get that spirit back. So in the conversation with him, I turned the attention toward what originally gave him the passion and the strength to think that those those visions were even possible. You know, 30 years ago, what made him think it would be uh, that he had the ability to pursue that? And, you know, and he told me that um, all of the love that he has, he, he's a musician. He told me all of the love that he has for the music and that he loves to work hard on it. And he loves to, to turn out a result, set a goal and reach a goal and being involved with other people. And, of course, you know, I told him, I said, write these things down. You're going to need those in a minute. So I asked him a more important question. I asked him, what values have you had hold true through all of this time that do keep you going, whether it's working a a career job or pursuing your passions, what are the values you hold most true to yourself? The ones that get you, the ones that give you strength during those hard times, what are those values? And he related to me, you know, simple ideas that tomorrow's always a new day. Many of the books that he's read uh, gave him strength to believe as long as you're giving your best effort, something will come. And so, I made him become aware that what's bothering you now is because you want to instill those values in another way. It's the contrast of life. This frustration is very healthy, but if you let it sit, it will mold inside of you and it'll create, it'll create a detrimental focus on life and it'll change the worst thing that it will change. It'll change the way you see yourself. And anytime that you don't act on that frustration, it will bring you down. That frustration is a motivating factor that's necessary. Frustration is telling you what you expect in life. And if you can't pursue it at all, you're going to hang on and listen to the rest of the story. And it's going to give you faith that you can do something about getting out of your own stuck rut. He shared with me something that you may be able to relate to. He said that all of his life, he's only dabbled in his passions. 
He's only, you know, kind of pursued them, never really dug in and sacrificed to make those things happen, even though they're the most important things to him. Do you have things in your life that you just dabble in and you let it sit on the shelf and you walk by when you see that you really wish you were better at it. You really, you wish you had more of it. You wish that you could communicate better about it, but you can't because you're just dabbling in it. And dabbling is one of the core sources that keeps you, that keeps you inside of your box and doesn't let you out to live. And he, like all of us, he could really line up the steps that he could take to get back involved in that passion because they're small steps. Small steps always work well. And he, he lined up. He just told me one thing after another that, you know, he said, I can make these phone calls. I could get a hold of these people. I could go buy these products. I could arrange the time to do it on the weekends to get started. And so I asked him the most awkward question that he had encountered in a long time. It left a pocket of silence. I said, when are you going to start? Give me a date. He did not want to answer. That's when the, the, the phone went quiet. And he just said, well, I really don't have a date. I said, okay, so you're back to dabbling. I recently had an experience in the recording studio. The last album that we put out, I was working with a guy named Sky Smee uh, producing it. And I'll never forget, he, he gave me that awkward moment too. He said, hey, when do you, when do you want to finish this recording? I said, gosh, I'm, I'm enjoying the creative process so much. Let's just stay busy. Let's just, you know, as they finish, we'll set them aside. We'll let the date decide itself. And he said, no. He said, give me a date. If we don't have a date, we're not going to finish. We can always improve it. He said, I want a date. And on that date, that is what we have. Now, this does not mean you can't flex a little bit from that date if you're really on to the goal. But he wanted a deadline to say that is where when we're going to say, hey, we're done. Let's work with what we've got. And he told me, he said, it's better to work with what you've got and see how you failed so you can move forward than it is to always wonder when you're going to reach your goal. And isn't it true? Time after time, you can do everything better tomorrow. You set it aside. You can work on it later. And some cases, this is true. If you're doing a painting, it's a, a great idea to put the brush down and come back the next day and look at it. But how long are you going to let that creation go on before you call it final? before you can call it yours, before you can show it to the world, and most importantly, move on to the next idea that you have and apply everything that you've learned from the mistakes you made in this one. It just makes sense. I can summarize all of this as one of the most effective playing grounds that you can have to move forward and to get to get unstuck and to move in and know that it's never too late. Know that you can start now pursuing what you really want in life and get that and taste it and enjoy it and be satisfied with your efforts. There are three questions that I would ask you. The first question is, when you think of the vision, what is your daily personal narrative about reaching that vision? Do you have a lot of doubt? Do you tell, you that you, tell yourself that you can't do it? Do you fill yourself in with a lot of distorted thinking while you're not even pursuing it? Or are you inspired by the vision and inspired by reminding yourself that you have that ability, that a little bit at a time, anything can be done? So number one is what is your personal narrative? The second one is what is the greatest inspiration that you have that pertains to what you really want? In other words, What's the book that you've read over and over that has principles outlined in it? What is, who is that person that has inspired you with a couple of sentences that remind you of your strength? You have got to latch onto these as your personal mantra because those are now coming from inside of you. When they come from inside of you, you can act in moments with greater strength than if you're relying on results to tell you if you have that strength. Act within from those inspirations. And the third one, set a deadline. Don't be a dabbler. Set a deadline. Be very involved in your pursuit. 
It doesn't mean you have to do it eight hours a day, but it does mean doing it regularly and consistently. There is nothing more satisfying to a human being than to want something. It arouses the dopamine in us. It gives gives us the vision that makes us sit and dream about dead better days. It's almost better than getting it. You've heard people talk about how sometimes they like looking forward to a vacation more than the actual vacation or planning for a party than actually having the party. And sometimes I've even heard people say that they would rather look forward to Christmas Day than have the day itself. So the, the idea of wanting can be a distortion that if you're satisfied with wanting and dreaming and scrolling on your phone about what you want, stop it. You are now dabbling. Don't be a dabbler. If you dabble too long, you're going to cycle back to the disappointment from which you started, and you're never going to taste that essence of yourself that you know is possible by getting involved. So before I go, we're running out of time, and I'm going to leave you with another musical number. But be sure to subscribe, nobowtie.com slash live. Be sure to subscribe. But I'm going to leave you with this that the number one thing you can do in your life on a daily basis that you do have control of is always do your best toward the ideas that mean the most. This is two versions of Remoris de la Caleta. The first, the classical from which I've stolen, and the second, the uh, bow tie taken out.